Dick Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. a terrible headache. <laughs> when are you going to take off the hat? You've been wearing it all day long. Okay. Why are you in a giddy mood today? Well, why shouldn't I be? I'm a man blessed with a three-day weekend after a tough week's work. I want to do something wild and abandoned. I've got a great plan for you. What? Go put all the shoe trees back in your shoes. Why well, be in a good mood when nobody can be in it with me? I am, darling. I am. I just want to finish this article. Hey, honey, I want to try an experiment. Hmm? Listen, I want to try the Polish Air Force Equilibrium Test on you. What's it do? Nothing. Just come on. Put your hands out. Well, now turn them over. Like that's it. What are you doing? Okay, well, that's it. Just bounce them on both hands like that. There. There what? Well, I mean, you're trapped. You can't do anything now. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, darling. Yeah. Okay, take them off for me now. <laughs> because, Sir Rob, see, I can't take them off. <laughs> and, <laughs> you love me? Yes. Now, Rob, would you t t take them off? I know. I'll go put my shoe treats in, okay? <laughs> prop them. I'll prop them right on this floor. Now, take them no, off. No, you won't. Those are the ones your mom gave us. <laughs> Okay, Rob, look, the game's over. I gotta go answer the door. Oh, Come on, take right. them off. You do. Well, listen, I'll answer the door. <laughs> Don't go away. Okay, Rob, from now on, I'm gonna start your underwear. <laughs> well, I. Oh, I was. Oh, Rob. Hi. There's no time for that now. What are you doing? What's the matter with you? I mean, there's a G-man in the living room. And there's a nut in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. There, that man in the living room is a government agent. What does he want? Us. A government agent here? What for? I don't know yet. Rob, did you pay the traffic tickets? Sure I did. Don't we got nothing to hide, honey? Come on. Hey, did you, did you mail my income tax return? Yeah. Well, we're clean. Come on. <coughs> Lolly. Just admiring the view. Oh, uh, Mr. Phillips, this is my wife, Laura. Honey, this is Mr. Phillips, the United States government agent. You make me sound so impressive, Mr. Petrie. <laughs> well, I guess you are to us. Won't you sit down, Mr. Phillips? Yeah. Thank you. This all right? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's our government agent chair there. <laughs> Have uh, we done something wrong? No, no, no. I guess it's kind of uh, natural to feel guilty around a law officer. <laughs> well, I'll come right to the point. What we want is your house. Our house did something wrong? <laughs> no. My department would like to use your house as a base for observation of the house across the street. Jerry Helper? He's my best friend. What did he do? No, no, not Mr. Helper's house. Uh, Mr. Gerard, Wendell P. Gerard. Do you know him? Well, not exactly. Has Mr. Gerard done something wrong? He seems like such a nice man. Just last week, he gave Richie some candy. Did Richie eat the candy? I don't know. We had a dog poisoned a few years ago. And you think Mr. Gerard did it? No, we didn't live here then. <laughs> Wait a minute, folks. Look, we're not really interested in Mr. Gerard. We're looking for one of his relatives, a Louis Darnier, a nephew of Mr. Gerard. Yeah, I don't think we know him. Darnier was deported three years ago. For what? For certain nefarious activities. Nefarious activities? What, spying, dope, and... No, no, more like just gambling. And he sneaked back into the country illegally, huh? Well, then you think his nephew might try to come to his house? Well, it's possible. This Donnie has several relatives on the East Coast. He might try hiding out with them. That's why we're asking you for the use of your house. Well, have other people let you use their houses as peaking places? Uh, he means, uh, she means observation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have. We're talking about a stakeout, aren't we? Matter of fact, yes. Stakeout in our living room? 
Well, actually, your uh, son's uh, room has the best view, and since he's away at the Cub Scouts... How do you know that? How do they know about these things? <laughs> well, what difference would it make if our son is here? And, uh, is there, you think there'd be some kind of danger? No, that's not very likely, ma'am. It's just that small boys, they don't keep secrets very well. Oh, I suppose this would probably be classified, right? In a way. <laughs> now, look, folks. We can't order you to let us use your house. Well, I don't know. What do you think, honey? Gee, I don't know. I... Well, I'd like to put a man in here as soon as possible. Look, if you'd like to talk things over, I'd be glad to step outside. Well, you don't have to do that. We'll step in the kitchen. We usually discuss our problems in the kitchen. <laughs> Excuse us. What do you think? Gee, I don't know, Rob. Having somebody like that in our living room, I... Just, I feel like a peeping Tom. Well, honey, this is like our government. I know, but I just... I don't like the idea of prying into somebody else's private affairs. You know? When is the last time you were asked to be a responsible adult citizen? Well, you're talking like a responsible adult citizen, but I have the feeling that inside there's a little boy jumping up and down saying, oh, goody, 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 cops and robbers. That is ridiculous. Is it? How many grown men still have their Captain Midnight Dakota rings? <laughs> don't still have it. It just happens to be in an old shoebox out there. Well, I don't notice you throwing it away. Well, there's a lot of things I don't know you don't notice. <laughs> All right. All right, honey, I will leave it entirely up to you. But remember one thing. If a gambling casino or a strip joint opens across the street, it's our fault. You're right. I am? I mean about being an adult citizen. We'll let them use the house. Swell. I mean, that good decision. <laughs> huh? I just happened to think of something. How do we know that man out there is really from the government? He showed me his identification. Wait, did you get a good look at it? I mean, you saw his picture and, and everything? Well, you just held it up like that for a second. Well, Rob, I'll agree to let them come in and use the house, but only if we check his credentials. Guys, that's so embarrassing. Not half as embarrassing as inviting someone into your home to mug you. <laughs> All right. Well, what have you folks decided? Uh... Well, there's a misfilter. There is one thing. What is that? Uh, well, uh, you can put a guy here, all right. Fine, I'm glad you cooperate. Well, Mr. Phelps, there's one other thing. Uh, I know you showed me your credentials and everything, but my wife, you know, she, I mean, she wanted to be sure. You, you flipped it so fast there. I, well, she's caught. You know how women are. You know. <laughs> look, I respect your precautions. Most people don't even look at them when we do show them. Well, it's just that my mother always told me, that when you get into a cab, always check the picture on the back of the seat to make sure it matches the driver. I don't know what good it does, but you do things for your mother. <laughs> Fine. 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 No. That's not it. There it is. Hello? May I come in? Well, yeah. Well, are you a TV repairman? No. I believe Mr. Phillips told you to expect me. Phillips? I don't believe I know any Mr. Oh, my government man. Mine, too. Oh, I mean, you're a government man. I thought you were a TV repairman. Well, I didn't want to attract any attention. Yeah, it's the uh, fine tuner, I think. Fine tuner's out of whack. <laughs> Mr. Petrie, <laughs> shouting attracts attention. Right, keep it down. By the way, uh, here's my identification. Mr. Phillips said you were a careful checker. Oh, <laughs> well, not me so much. My wife, you know, she just wants to know who you are, who you are. I know who you are. Well, could I see it? Oh. <laughs> All right. Bond. Harry Bond? Hey, you got the same last name? Yeah, uh, please, no jokes. <laughs> I'm not double upset. Well, uh, where shall I set up? Oh, I'll take you to the boys' room. I beg your pardon. Why not? Oh, sorry. I hope this will be all right for the stakeout. I mean, you know, for observing. Just put your things on the bed. There. It's fine. Fine. Mom. In the bedroom, honey. Out in the driveway. And there's a TV repairman in here. Is something wrong? Good to tell me your cover's holding. Miss Petrie, I'm uh, Mr. Phillips' partner. The agent? Oh, how do you do? Uh, well, yeah. then that television repair truck is. Really it's a, a repair truck. Uh, one of our men is inside with the walkie talkie. He'll station himself a few blocks from here. In case there's oh. a contact, right? Right. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Petrie, here's my identification. I already checked with him. 
Bond? Uh, Isn't that the honey, name of the... Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, um, Mr. Bond, I cleaned the window so that you could see the house very clearly. Yeah, I noticed that, Mrs. Petrie. Uh, but it looks a little funny from outside. Cleaner than all the others, you know. I'm sure they've done that, honey. It draws attention to this room. Oh. Excuse me. Yeah, Marvin. Hi, Harry. We just got a report down here at headquarters that Dornier was seen in Sector 6 an hour ago. Sector 6? That's us! Yep. Looks like New Rochelle is it. New Rochelle, we're it. Well, I'd better get busy watching. Is there anything we can do, Miss Bond? You haven't had dinner yet, have you? Uh, no. Why don't you have dinner? Right. <laughs> Come on, honey, it's a dinner break. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Think you'll show up? He might. Oh, my wife made some nut chewies. Would you like one? <laughs> hey, thanks. Uh, oh, uh, no, thank you. I got a sort of a toothache. I know. I've had those. Mm. But uh, thank her anyway. It was a nice thought. That's, that's okay. Boy, oh, boy, have you got a lot of great gadgets in your business. You folks pay for them. <laughs> Walkie-talkie, huh? Yeah. Yeah, my son's got one just exactly like it. <laughs> this, uh, is that anything? It is. Uh, don't take the cap off. Oh, oh, gotcha. It won't explode. It's a simple homing device. Oh, you mean beep, 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 beep. Mm, yeah, sure. Hey, boy. Is that a beautiful camera? It's got infrared film in it. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> a tape recorder? Yeah. Yeah. Compact. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, banana? Boy. <laughs> Exceptionally good uh, specimen there, nicely flat. <laughs> <It's a winter. laughs> I hope you'll excuse me for being a little silly. This is my first stakeout. That's all right. Hey, somebody's going by the Gerard house. Yeah, I see him. What are you going to do? Nothing. It looks like just the paper boy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's not the regular paper boy, though. He's not? No. That's the kid who comes on weekends. <laughs> Oh, this is the weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have to report that, huh? No. Uh, but uh, thanks for reminding me I should report in. Oh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Hello, headquarters. Hello. Hello, Harry. How's everything? It's quiet here, Marvin. Look, nobody's passed the house except the paper boy. The uh, weekend paper boy. <laughs> Anything to report there? No, nothing. Hey, uh, how's your junior G-man? Is he still... Uh, Marvin, this isn't, uh, classified, is it? Uh, Mr. Petrie's in the room with me. Oh, uh, uh yes, yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, I'll leave till you can finish your report there. <laughs> tell, tell Marvin I'm gone. <laughs> Mom, what are you doing? Huh? Well, the paper boy came out to get the paper. But should you be going out there? Honey, they said to act natural. If you leave the paper out there all night long, well, they'll know something natural, they'll know something's wrong. I better get the paper. <laughs> Boy, it's weird out there. There's nobody out there. I can feel Harry Bond looking at me, though. Did you see me almost blow it? No, what happened? Well, I started to wave at him, and I turned it into one of these. <laughs> well, they 
You said that Dornier's been reported to the neighborhood for hours now. Yeah, I think if he were going to show up here to hide out, he'd have arrived by now. Yeah, well, nothing's happened to him. Rob, he's a gangster. Well, I, well, I don't mean that, honey. It's just that he get all excited and keyed up and nothing. Well, you talk like you want trouble. Well, I don't. It's a little excitement, maybe. What is it to have a government agent in your house and who just sits around and eats bananas? <laughs> Did he like the nut chewies? Oh, he couldn't eat it, honey. He's got a bad tooth. Well, how can he spy with a bad tooth? Honey, those guys are trained to spy with bamboo shoots under their fingernails. <laughs> Rob, maybe we ought to get out of the house. You go to a movie or something? Honey, we gotta stay here in case he needs us for something. Like what? Well, like the nut chewies you made for him. Well, he didn't need them. Well, he might need a glass of milk or banana or something. We gotta stay around here and act natural. Well, boy, I sure don't feel very natural. I don't look it either. Then why don't we go visit someone? Honey, Dornier is in Sector 6. I know, so let's go visit someone in Sector 7. <laughs> we can't. We gotta stay around here and try to act natural, honey. Well, boy, I sure wish we could think of something. Hey, what do you do at 7 o'clock if you haven't already done it? Eat. Yeah, right. I didn't serve you dinner. Well, not since yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what, what would you like? Well, uh, I, something very light, honey. I might have to, you know, move. Don't you move that way. Just Go lettuce or something. Energy food. <laughs> Across the street. They can see me from Denver. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. I, uh, I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd see if anything had developed. It has. What? What? My little toothache has developed into a great big one. I couldn't resist those darn nut chewies. <laughs> hey, listen. My next door neighbor's a dentist. I could call him. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, that's right. His wife is a blab. Well, you've got that in your report. Yeah, my replacement is due in about an hour. I think I can hold out till then. <laughs> Boy, you know that? That looks awfully swollen. Does the real hurt? The pain goes shooting right through my eyes. I mean, I can hardly see straight. Oh. Uh, listen, uh... Maybe you'd feel better if you lay down for a little while. Well, I probably would, but I can't. Well, I, I could watch the window for you. No, I don't think so. Well, no, really, you could lay right there, and I'd be right here. I, I'm good with the binoculars. Well, I don't know. Oh, I... please. I mean, you know, you'd feel better, and you'd be laying right there. You know, with all that pain, you might miss something out that window. Uh, you may be right, but... I know I'm right. Yeah, I know. Go in the bathroom, rinse out your mouth with some good warm water. There's some aspirin in the medicine cabinet. Put a couple on the tooth. It always helps me. Uh, Mr. Bond? What? Can I have the binos? The what? The uh, binox. Or binoculars? Yeah, check. Huh? Sure. Should I uh, log in here or anything? No. Just look. Go ahead and rinse out. Well, his baby I spent a kind of week. Well, it's, uh, well, it's only been about 20 minutes. picture with this infrared camera. Of what? <clears throat> well, of you sleeping. <laughs> Mr. Petrie, why did you do that? <laughs> accident. It was just an accident. I, mean, I thought I'd better tell you. You know, if the government saw it, they might die of <laughs> day's pain or something. <laughs> Oh, don't worry about it. Thanks for telling me. This drives doors open. Uh, what, you want these? Hold on. Keep looking. Keep looking. And tell me what happens. 
Okay. Well, it's Gerard. Come on, Marvin. Marvin. Come in, Marvin. Gerard's coming out the front door. This darn thing doesn't work. He's coming down the steps. Darn thing. What's the matter with this thing? It's out of batteries. That's my son's. <laughs> Where's mine? Oh, uh, well, here. I had in case Marvin checked in. And he's almost to the sidewalk. Oh, Marvin, come in. Come in, Marvin. Yes, Harry. Gerard just left the house. He's coming across the street. Hey, he's coming up our path. He's at our front door. He's at our front door. He's at the front door, Marvin. Hey, what does he want? What do I do now? I'll send a car over. Play it safe until you find out if Dornier is there. Check. Hey, what does he want? Oh, what do we do? We'll huh? find out. Just go to the door. Act normal. I'll be right with you so there won't be any trouble. Okay. What, what's the gun for? So there won't be any trouble. <laughs> Which way's the living room? <laughs> I we were spying. I don't think so. Act like nothing is wrong. I'll cover you from the kitchen. Okay. I'm Mr. Patrick. Huh? I'm a marksman. Good. <laughs> Hello? Hello. I'm Mr. Girard from Acosta Street. Well, I, I hate to disturb you this late, but my privacy has been invaded. Uh, may I come in, please? Well, yeah, I'll come in, please. Just, I'm sorry your privacy was invaded. <coughs> Mr. Rob, I heard you. Mr. Gerard. Everything's all right, honey. Uh, nothing is all right. My privacy has been invaded. Well, where He's is... in the kitchen, honey. Our uh, puppy. We have a puppy in the oh. kitchen. <laughs> Hello. What? <laughs> Tripped. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't, I don't, um, <clears throat> Mr. Gerard, did you want something? Mr. and Mrs. Petri, in every human life, unpleasantness comes. It is my unfortunate pleasure to bring you unpleasantness. Tonight, there is no peace in my heart. There isn't? No, no, because I am upset. I must do something I do not want to do. Mr. Bond! Mr. Bond, that's our puppy, Mr. Bond, Mr. Puppy. May I use your telephone? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I must, I must, I must. No. Look. Get down, honey! <laughs> Take the <laughs> All right, put your hands up! <laughs> no, not you. No, you are. No, mommy, you are. <laughs> All right, now, what's going on here? Please, I need my hand to explain. Go ahead. Thank you. You see, my nephew is a, is, is a wanted criminal. He's invaded my privacy. He's right down in my bed, asleep, and this gun this was in the bed. I found there with him. I am afraid. He's a terrible person. I must call the police. He's the, he, what's the number of the police? You won't need that. Come on, let's go get your nephew. Who is he? Well, he is a special agent of our government. Already here? How? <laughs> I'll explain later, Mr. Gerard. In this country, is everything going so fast? Can I have the phone? No, I don't. I have one at home. Thank you. <laughs> Bob, where are you going? Honey, I don't want to order to see him make the capture. But, Rob, it's damn bad. You're in your pajamas. Harry Bond is a marksman. But, Rob, it's dangerous. I'll be back in a minute, honey. You catch cold, Rob. They'll never even notice me. They don't. <laughs> What's all right with him, honey? He let me. I was using the camera and a walkie-talkie, everything. I was his assistant. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, Thrush. This is Agent 0009. If you do not release our agents immediately, we will activate our atomic deactivator and we'll blow up your tonsils. <laughs> you read me there, Thrush? This is Thrush. Hi, Thrush. <laughs> we read you and we'll release all your agents if you just stop playing with our equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bond... I'm sorry, I thought this was my son's. It's all right, 0009. We'll be right in. Okay. Over, uh, over and out. Happy now? Well, yeah, they're releasing our agents, aren't they? <laughs>